Luke 18 and verse 2. There was a city, in a city, a judge. May you never meet this kind of judge in your life in Jesus' name. My apologies to those who are, those of us who are judges and magistrates, I'm your friend. There was in a city a judge. Look at the description of this kind of man. The Bible says, which feared not God. That means it's difficult for God to speak to him. Number two, he neither regarded man. You couldn't bribe him, you couldn't come and beg. What sort of a man is this? So this is scene one. And then scene two, the Bible says there was a widow. A widow is a, supposedly a defenseless woman. Her source of security and defense has been taken away from her. He's teaching you the power of prayer. And then the Bible says she came to him, that man. Avenge me of my adversary. Verse 4. The Bible says he would not for a while. But afterwards he said within himself my god that means there's something prayer does even to the most hardened situation if you pray with time there is an energy that prayer exerts that begins to change even the most impossible situations he says though i fear not god so the man is aware he's aware of his condition it's not just that the writer is telling lies the man is aware he's testifying here now that even though i do not fear god nor regard man verse 5 it says yet because this widow troubled me so there is something that prayer does to situations and circumstances i will avenge her lest by her importunity or the bible says her continual coming she weary or weaken me this is an illustration to show you what prayer does in the realm of the spirit that no matter how weak and defenseless you are if you can engage prayer consistently that it can do something in the face of situations and circumstances prayer is a command once you are a man if you are an angel and you are a spirit you don't need to pray but provided you are wearing this material body the bible mandates that we pray first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 second scripture for that point let's hurry up first thessalonians 5 and verse 17 apostle paul is speaking to the church in thessalonica and he says pray without season the word pray without season does not mean pray from morning till night every day you do that you become an irresponsible man you will not be able to fulfill other things the idea here is be consistent the power of prayer is not just in the activity but the consistency pray without season number two why should we pray according to first corinthians chapter 14 and verse 2 the bible recommends prayer as one of the strategies for fellowship with god and fellowship with heaven the bible says in this case speaking about praying in an unknown tongue it says for he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men but unto god now there's no time to contrast this with what the bible calls diverse kinds of tongues there are two different experiences when we come to the series on the holy spirit then we touch the gifts of the spirit then i will teach you this the bible um creates a dichotomy between what it calls the, the gift of diverse kinds of tongues and the prayer language that was given to all believers this has been an age-long controversy in the body of christ as to whether it is all men that pray in tongues like all the other nine gifts um the gift of diverse kinds of tongues is not given to everyone but the prayer language it says for this promise is unto you and to your children and to your children's children as many as are far off even as many as the lord will call when you read all through the books of acts every time the holy ghost came it came on all of them no reservation they were all filled with the holy spirit they began to speak whether it's acts chapter 2 whether it's acts chapter 6 to 8 whether it's acts chapter 19 the most classic sign or the most classic defense of the baptism of the holy spirit with the evidence of speaking in tongues is found in acts chapter 19. maybe we just look at that very quickly just to clear the air on that 
verse 1 the bible says paul having passed through the upper coast the bible says that um he came to ephesus and then he found certain disciples follow the discourse verse 2 he said unto them have you received the holy ghost since you believed and they said unto him we have not so much heard whether there be any holy ghost they were disciples so you see there was something about their teacher their teacher was not teaching them something they said in our lecture we've not received this we don't even know that there's anything called the holy spirit surprise now he said unto what then were you baptized and they said unto john's baptism now the lecture begins verse 4 he said john's baptism verily verily john baptized with the baptism of repentance saying to the people that they should believe on him who should come after him that is on christ verse 5 when they heard this they were baptized in the name of the lord jesus the miracle now and when paul had laid his hands on them the holy ghost came on them and they spoke with tongues and prophesied the bible tells us their number verse 7 the bible says and all the men were about 12 and they all received so i just thought to bring this in we have a separate series where we'll deal with that praise the name of the lord but just for you to know that when we talk about the prayer language of tongues we're not talking about the gift of the diverse kinds of tongues are we together fellowship with god when you begin to pray in the spirit it brings fellowship in fact the bible says the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god he says the fellowship that's where we get the word koinonia the sharing together the participation of the spirit he says let it abide with you let it remain with you let it be with you when you fellowship with god, with god you fellowship with the spirit there is a divine deposit that comes from god into you a transmission of power wisdom grace every spiritual virtue that makes for your excelling fellowship is very important are we together it is one of the tools for fellowship number three why does the bible mandate that we pray prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and for transformation prayer is one of the authorized platforms for growth and transformation first corinthians 14 and verse 4 just two verses after what we just where we just read first corinthians 14 and verse 4 the bible says he that speaketh in an unknown tongue edify it edify it the word edify is an architectural term you build yourself you build capacity in the spirit remember the bible says if you turn aside in the day of battle it is that your strength capacity is small so you build capacity in the spirit when you pray he that prays edifies himself luke chapter 9 luke chapter 9 probably one of the most classic representations of the transforming power of prayer Luke chapter 9 verse 28 and 29 Luke chapter 9 the Bible says and it came to pass about an eight days after these sayings he took Peter John and James and went up to the mountain to pray verse 29 the Bible says and as he prayed watch transformation two things happen one the fashion of his countenance was altered and his raiment became white and glittering there is a dimension of beauty and glory you evolve is like it's like a transformation into superior dimensions of yourself when you pray i am telling you this works you can pray your way to higher dimensions of yourself growth and transformation Bring for me a weak believer, timid, completely ignorant, but with the heart that is bent on prayer, I show you a sign and a wonder just a few months and a few years later. Let one day become one week, become one month, become one year, become three years, become five years, and I show you a sign 
and a wonder was it not paul himself that says i thank my god i pray in tongues more than ye all are we together i hope god is blessing us say amen, amen. it's very important that we pray growth and transformation is impossible for a believer if you do not pray now you see for many believers prayer is simply a tool for petitions and for receiving not transformation the primary assignment of prayer i'll be teaching as as we proceed in the series the primary assignment of prayer believe me is not for breakthroughs for miracles etc no most of the breakthroughs that we need we even need them in the first place because of ignorance of the principles of the kingdom remember the bible says when you are praying pray that your kingdom come because when his kingdom comes there are many things you will not need to ask for again because of the presence of the kingdom most of the miracles that we seek today are acts of god's mercy correcting our ignorance so if you understand the kingdom and the ways of god your prayers will largely be that of fellowship and growth not just petitions because the accuracy of your understanding will bring triumph after triumph result after result in your life is that true god's desire is not for us to live in the realm of what we know to be miracles signs and wonders they are supposed to be um, a thing of wonder to unbelievers largely but to we who are in the kingdom miracles help to escort us to the place where we get to maturity and accuracy in the spirit now we begin to live by the mysteries of the kingdom growth and transformation show me a believer who engages in prayer for many of us our prayer is not systemic it's not methodical it's haphazard if you are fortunate to wake up early in the morning good for god and good for you that day you can at least steal out 30 minutes quickly and feel spiritual and then backslide in a very very bad way until after one month or when situations wake you up then you quickly catch up you ask for forgiveness you repent and then you start again do you know that even in the secular mastery is gained through consistency ask anybody who leads his field in the secular you do not become a professional in anything by just freelancing and shadow boxing and getting your way you have to invest your time your energy your resources in ever increasing dimensions to attain mastery consistency growth and transformation you must get to a point where you see the relevance of prayer you discipline yourself you get up in the morning this is the day the lord has made you're praying Sheila Kapo, Siata. you understand edification you begin to deposit prayer i'll be teaching us as the series proceed that prayer is one of the mysteries that is not bound by time that means you can send it to your tomorrow to wait for you prayer is powerful yes sir your prayer can be like an usher like a protocol you send it into your tomorrow to verify that the road is clear before you arrive if for any reason it goes there and find demons attempting to go ahead you know what the woman's prayer did to that judge that's exactly what will be happening while you come triumphantly it's dangerous to step into a realm that prayer did not usher you into it's risky because the whole world lies in wickedness are we together let's hurry up we have to pray Jude 1, Jude has only one chapter, verse 20. The Bible again talks about prayer. It says, but ye beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. So prayer builds up. There are many ways that prayer builds up. It builds up by activating your organs of interaction with the realm of the spirit. So when you begin to pray, what happens to you is that your discernment and sensitivity is activated. You can know then you come into dimensions where people like papa hagen now begin to talk about the knowing of the spirit where you can know things even though your eyes may not see angels but you can know they are here 
and at first when you start in the school of prayer it will look like you are lying but the accuracy and the predictability of your result will convince you eventually that that faculty of perception is not a lie you will know you will perceive danger prayer is powerful it brings you to a point where you are able to interact that duality of realms you are human yet you are spiritual you can be in a place and yet perceive spiritual realities number four the fourth reason why we pray in this kingdom is as an instrument for warfare and intercession yes sir warfare and intercession ladies and gentlemen demons are real spirits are real wickedness is real the devil is as determined as ever to see that he thwarts the purposes of god over our lives and all that concerns us meaning if you fold your hands and let him be he will shred your life and destroy your family and everything that pertains unto you but there is a provision in our dealing with god where believers can take advantage of the forces of the spirit that were all brought as a result of the finished work of christ and through this mystery we call warfare and intercession we can engage and establish these realities in our lives here and now warfare and intercession is very powerful james chapter 5 and verse 13 apostle james now is teaching us james 5 and verse 13 the bible says is any among you afflicted buffeted is any among you in a situation that is unpleasant is many among you seeing the handwriting of satan over your children your life your career your business don't explain it away using science or sociology it says the moment you find affliction the solution is let him pray we do every other thing but prayer we discuss with people who do not have the maturity nor the might to help us out of that situation and yet we do not pray is any among you afflicted he says let him pray for time's sake we may not read on but when you read down to 18 it uses elijah it personifies an individual called elijah that he was a man of like passions but he took the tool of prayer and literally stopped rain physically not a parable over a territory let me tell you this elijah was not the only one who believed in the god of the bible and i'm sure there were people who said god don't mind him we command rain to come and yet rain did not come because a man had authority to prayer and god respected his authority regardless what you were saying that day you will keep talking if elijah did not speak rain would not come may god give us that kind of authority that you can stand and speak over your family and say this year you all rise and go to bed it doesn't matter who is talking after you he spoke too late you have declared let all the enchantments and all the divination speak not the one that you pray and then you go and lie down and say what are they saying now no elijah's authority when he declared it he said i know god he went to bed there were other prophets under the custody of obadiah i'm sure someone would have been annoyed and say what an arrogant man god bring rain to show this man he's not the only one and god said no he doesn't work like that when you ascend in this spirit and you have authority you will do wonders with it he prayed for a space of three and a half years there was no rain and then to show you it was not luck he went again and did the same thing and rain came hallelujah warfare and intercession it was on the strength of prayer in acts chapter 12 when you read from verse 1 to 17 the bible says peter was bound hand and feet in chains they were preparing to kill him but the bible says verse 5 that peter was kept in prison but prayer was made without season that's paul's encouragement now 
of the church unto God for him. Believe me when I tell you prayer is powerful. They began to engage the realm of the spirit. Suddenly the Bible tells us that an angel came. The angel was always available. Peter would have died without that angel coming. And yet the angel was available. Somewhere in this series we'll talk about the ministry of angels. Because most believers do not know anything about the ministry of angels. The Bible says their assignment is to walk in partnership with the Holy Spirit. To see that the word of God is never called a lie in your life. That's the assignment of angels. They are enforcers. That means when there is nothing happening from your end, they keep loitering around. Did you know that one of the ways that Satan knows God is doing something with you is through the activity of angels in the realm of the spirit? A prayerless believer does not have angelic activities. What are they doing? When Satan begins to sense unusual angelic activities, he was once there, so he knows. Uh -uh, these angels don't come for nothing, they are coming in response. When Jacob slept in chapter 28 of Genesis, when he slept, the Bible lets us know that he saw a ladder connecting to the heavens and angels were ascending and descending. The Bible never said they were coming to him. He only saw them walking. They were going to those who were calling their ministry. That was why he said the Lord was here. These angels were passing me and they didn't do anything to me. There's no record of any angel bringing anything to him. Yet they were ascending and descending. Angels can be in your compound. They can be in your vicinity. They can be in your office. Ascending and descending. Bringing testimonies for those who are praying. Do not make the mistake of Jacob. Jacob said the Lord was in this place. I had a chance for my lifting. I had a chance for my rising. But, but according to the law of the will. It will be scripturally incorrect for the angels to come and do anything you did not ask them to do. I want to show you why many of you can have dreams and see a lot of angelic activities and yet nothing ever happens. Angels don't come because you are a Christian. They come because there is a demand. 